uh, is about higher education, so it's a bit different from the different speaker, and the emphasis was on teaching uh, teaching concepts. So I come from ITC, which is a faculty in the Netherlands that is focused on geographic information science. Uh, we have a long history on, on the field, uh, and we work mainly with students from all over the world. Since 2017, we have been uh, experimenting with QGIS to teach the first quartile of our Master of Science students, so to teach the fundamentals, and uh, QGIS was the tool to support that. But we did not have uh, a lot of students. We are talking about an online course. So we needed a stress test. But not all is bad. The stress test came. COVID, everyone went home. And what we did is that we took the experience from those three years and we just built a course around QGS and the living textbook. I will explain briefly what is this living textbook, but it's essentially the reference book for the course. So uh, we had 32 students that could not travel and they were scattered among eight time zones, so we wanted to design a course that would be flexible enough. Um, so, and the idea was that the student could start in a classical setting, there is a lecture, then he does exercises, then he does some reading, or maybe the student prefers to read first, or maybe he prefers to start with the exercise. The idea is that students were allowed to take the, their learning in any order that they want, to provide that flexibility. So, uh, at the end, what were the results? So, there is no, so each of these represents one learning style, doesn't matter which one it is, what matters is that there is no clear dominance, and that, that tells us that, you know, everyone is different, so it's only natural that people prefer to learn in different ways. Uh, another important outcome is that students were satisfied with QGIS and the living textbook, so this basic, like you want to score here in the evaluation of the course, so students were generally happy um, with it and they felt well prepared. And this one, which I don't have time to go through it, but long story short, when it comes to the marks, so what was the final score of the student, they scored higher than the equivalent course in-house, which for us was a big achievement because this was all done, you know, not with that much time. So so that is a, a very interesting uh, result. So uh, what are the main takeaways? Why do we call it towards a sustainable, uh, sustainable and inclusive education? Well, first, because if you use open source uh, software, of course, then you have a license model that is very inclusive in the sense that the, the, the entry barriers are very low, like anyone can use it, right? Uh, so if you, if you ensure that there is continuous access, you are also in, uh, ensuring that there is a sustainable impact that more stuff will be created or can be created if the student chooses this, this path of GIS and spatial analysis. The second uh, important uh, takeaway is about inclusiveness, right? Uh, we chose QGIS not just because it is mature, but also because the governance model. So QGIS, in, in, when it comes to community, has many things that I believe they work very well. And in practice, that means, you know, if you have the commitment, if you have an idea, it's a community that has the space to hear your idea and see where that idea could, um, could take you. Uh, and finally, uh, from a more didactic point of view, if you allow that flexibility, so you don't impose a predetermined set of tasks in the order of the tasks, that basically means that you are catering for different personalities, different learning styles, and that reflects on the result in the learning experience of your students. So thank you for your attention. If you want to know what is the living textbook, talk with me, scan this. And this is the open courseware. So all the so there's a whole syllabus to teach the basics of geographic information science. It's open courseware. You can use it in your courses. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and you can make pull requests. They are welcome if you want to improve the material or if you see something that could be improved. Okay? Thank you very much.